Welcome to Expo 09 here at Alec County. This is a Let's Talk special with my special guest, Lee, formerly of Steps. How you doing? Lee, thanks very you much right? for joining us. Um, formerly of Steps, do you mind talking about Steps? Yeah, you're not allowed to mention it. <laughs> no, Never good. ever again. No, you can say whatever you want. You can yeah. ask whatever you want. It's, it's a great part of my life, you know, it's an amazing history to have. So, far away. I'm so happy. how long ago are we talking about since you broke up? 2001. 2001. Believe so it or not. Eight years already. It's a long time yeah. ago, yeah. Uh, I believe we um, ruined a few Christmases that year because it was on Boxing Day 2001. And it was um, top news as well. It made the press, it made the website. Um, I've had a few people here today come up to me and go, oh, I was really upset, my <laughs> granddaughter, or whatever. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't think we were very popular on that day. Yeah. But a lot of people uh, obviously remember those days uh, with great fondness, you know, a lot of people bought your records, but what was it really like to be a member of Steps? Uh, it, was, it was great, it was fantastic, it was hard, it was tiring. Uh, we were working around 16 to 18 hour days every single day and people don't realise that, they think, well you must have a weekend off or a, a Sunday off or there was no Friday evening sort of excitement feel, there was no mon Monday morning sort of, oh it's Monday morning feel, it was just a day was a day. Um, we travelled everywhere, you know, we met so many people, so many famous people, so many artists and then just so many great people all over the world, you know, working with and the fans that we performed for. So. It, it was hectic as hell, yeah. but it was exciting at the same time. Yeah. And you must miss those days, you know, performing in front of huge audiences, girls screaming at you. I still get that today. A few <laughs> grannies have screamed at me today and here, it'll be all right. One woman offered to take me home because her husband's out for the day, so <laughs> well, that's about it. It must be a great buzz. Uh, yeah, and it was. It was, it was surreal and it was strange uh, because one minute I went to an audition, the next minute we had a record deal, the next minute we're performing in front of 20,000 people on tour, then we're going all over the world and meeting people and then everybody knew who I was and I was in magazines, I was on TV, but I didn't know who anybody was. Yeah. And you'd, you'd, you'd have people come up to you go, oh Lee, how you doing? You'd think, I can't be rude, where do I know them from? Where do I know them from? And then you realise you've actually never met them, but they seem to know a lot about you, so it's a surreal world, yeah. it really is. When did you first know you were famous? Uh, one for Sorrow. Uh, it was our third single and it went to number two in the UK charts and that to me is when we had the big turnaround happen. The album took off and did really well, we started to get a lot more TV appearances, um, we started to hit European countries and it, it just, things started to change for us and I always remember it being around when One for Sorrow came out because before that we were just this cheesy line dancing pop group that people either loved us or hated us. And I think to this day people loved us or hated us, but there's a lot of closet fans, you know you are. <laughs> closet fans are out there. Um, but yeah, One for Sorrow was the big turning point, I think. And how did uh, family and friends react when you did get this fame? Did, did things change? It's a weird one. People say, oh, you've changed, you've changed. And, and, and what we all found actually was people changed around us. We tried to stay the same as what we were. You know, I love my family. I'm very working class. My feet have always been on the floor, very level-headed. I'm probably too calm and horizontal at times, you know. But people around you change because they think that you've changed. So they start treating you differently and they start acting a weird way around you. And like my friends got very protective whenever we went out, which was nice, but not really needed at times. Yeah. So it, it did affect family and friends in, in a strange way. I remember my mum, um, she might hate me for saying this, but she, she, uh, her name's Stella and she works at, um, she's a nurse, you know, and helps out and she cleans and stuff and does lots of great things for people. And when Steps took off, all her friends started introducing her as Lee's mum. Oh, right. So she lost her identity. So was, yeah, her yeah. identity, her own self. And it was like, well, she really hated that. So on that side, it's, it's quite negative in a way yeah. because it's nothing to do with my mum. I'm the one out there working, but she was Lee's mum. So it, it can have a negative effect at yeah. times as well. Apart from the obvious things as well, what's, what are the benefits of being in a, a famous pop band? Um, but for me personally, it was traveling and meeting lots of people. It really was. Um, because it's something that you would never ever dream of doing. You know, you, I, I thought I would be a footballer or a, a physio or something in sports. Now, because I was always into sports. And then I did acting and I started to sing and I, I moved from the north to the south and trained at college and I got steps and my whole life changed. And it was just phenomenal the amount of things that you do and the places you go. And 20 people in an audience, as we were talking about, you know, can be great to perform to, but then you can get up to 150,000 people and it's, wow. it's just phenomenal. And you're on every TV show, every magazine. I've even got a tin of beans at home with steps on the label. It's just ridiculous, it really is. Did you get the dolls and things I did. like that? Yeah. In Kinder Eggs. I've got a doll of me that big. The funniest, sorry, I don't shut up, do I? The funniest story ever. 
was I had my head posted to me <laughs> as a doll. I thought someone was sending me death threats, but it was they were making up the dolls. I had a head about this big coming in the post. Do you like your head? I was like, it's a bit weird. Yeah, it's fine. Take it back. Um, performing in front of 150,000 people, I bet it doesn't get much better than that. It, it doesn't. Um, like a, it was a huge sort of festival that we did. I, th I think it was in Germany at the time. There was a lot of people there and we were there with some big rock artists as well as big pop artists. And it was just a great experience to do and to meet loads of people. But I, I think what actually means a lot is when you do your own tour. Because you know then that the 20,000 people in the stadium in front of you or the arena, they're there to see you. Yeah. They've actually saved all their money, they pay for their ticket and they want to see you on stage. So you're not jumping on the bandwagon with other artists, you've got your own bandwagon. And that's a fantastic feeling. But they well. were you know, a, a very young group of fans. It was very family orientated, what I found was, um, I had the mums and H had the kids. <laughs> that's, that's how we found it and the girls just got all the guys. Yeah. So it was, it was a very mixed audience and obviously the gay scene as well, absolutely loved us. Yeah. Um, so we, we were huge all through the family and the gay scene, yeah. yeah. Now you worked very closely together, you, you, you toured together, you virtually lived together, all of you. So I suppose you've stayed really good friends afterwards? Not bad, yeah, not bad. Um, it, it split, when we split up it split very strangely. Um, I didn't know much about the split when it happened. And um, so we were, all, we were all a bit up in the air with each other for a while. But it's been a long time, you know, it's been like we said, it's almost eight years. Yeah. Um, and Water Under the Bridge and all that, we were all recently together at Claire's wedding. Oh, right. And that's the first time the five of us have actually all been in the same room together, having pictures together. Yeah. And we all just suddenly went straight back into it, into our places. And I thought, this is weird. Eight years on. But um, no, we've, we do. We keep in touch. and We call each other. We go around for meals every now and again. So we're starting to be really good friends again, yeah. which is really nice. Uh, take that. Spand our ballet. Reforming. Any chances? We do get asked a lot. Um, and the, the only thing I will say, and it's being on the fence, it really is, but... The, the, the girls are having babies, they're getting married, um, we're all doing our own little thing, we've got our own private projects on the go at the moment, hence why I'm here today. Uh, I think it could happen, but it would have to be the right time for everybody individually, rather than just do it for the sake of doing it. I think it has to be done for the right reasons. Yeah. So at the moment it has to be a definite no, um, but I reckon within the next year, two years, I think then is the chance of a big possibility. Yeah. Personally, if it doesn't happen, say within two years, it's not going to. So. You can tell me to mind my own business, but mind your own business. Did, did you uh, <laughs> did you make a lot of money out of being in steps? Shit loads. I'm like multi-millionaire. <laughs> me, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, no, I think um, the great thing about Steps was we were one of the biggest touring bands in the UK, and I think when you're at that, that's the height of your career, your fame, and everything. That's where the money is. It's when you're touring. Uh, you can make from record sales and that, but really you make your money if you write the songs. Yeah. And obviously we were a pop band. We didn't really write a lot of the songs. Yeah. Later on we did, but not in the early days. So money is really, any aspiring artist, write the songs. Yeah. That's where your money is, yeah, realistically. Absolutely. I will talk to you, I promise, about uh, yes. why you're here Please today. Please do. Yeah. Um, first of all, though, I just wanted to um, ask you about uh, how you were regarded by other bands, you know, the rock bands. You said you performed on the same stage as them. Yeah. Um, I think with Steps, because I've done also, you probably don't know, I actually have my own rock band as well after yeah. Steps, so I toured on the different level. But um, with Steps, it was more... It was very commercial pop, as we all know. Yeah. It was very high energy, it was very happy. And some people just loved us for the fact that we were taking the piss out of ourselves. We were enjoying it. We weren't trying to be something that we weren't and trying to, we're really credible, we're doing this. Yeah. It's no, we're happy, we're fun, we're pop, we dance, we sing, we enjoy what we do. Love it or hate it, that's it, that's what we're about. We never hid anything. And we got a lot of respect for that. And there were bands out there, as there were people out there that wouldn't buy our records because it's just not their scene. Yeah. But there's music out there I wouldn't buy. It's just not my scene. And that's just the way life is. You know, you can't force anyone to like your sound. No. So. But you must have worked with some fairly big names. Bon Jovi, fantastic. <laughs> Jay JLo, met her a few times. We toured with Britney for two months all over America. Wow. Um, you know, I've sat in a room and chatted to Steve Tyler. It's just it's it's phenomenal the amount of things I'm just name dropping. <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> the amount of things you do, but it became a day-to-day -day thing with us because yeah. we were very lucky as well. There's a lot of bands out there that don't make it, and we did make it. We were very lucky, and we, we have to appreciate that. And we were in a situation at times that, like I said, some people can only dream about. Absolutely. People yeah. aspiring to it all the time. Now, you're here in Spain. You're here at Expo 09. Spain, yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, well, as I said to you before, I've always been into fitness yeah. quite a lot. Um, even though today I do still sing, I do still act. There's so lots of things I'm involved with. But I'm here today for uh, famouslyfit.com. I've um, got a magazine in, yep. so I'll show you, so if you can, it's 
famouslyfit.com, the World Club because we're branching out into Spain and the Canary Islands and that. And this is just basically, um, I'm into fitness, I qualified recently as a personal trainer. Oh, right. And many other things, kickboxing, box size, PT, core stability circuits, there's loads of things that I'm heavily involved with. And while I was doing it, I, it sort of hit me how hard it really is and how, how little I actually did know when I thought I knew a lot for how much I was training. So learning about the body, the way it works, the right nutrition, the right diet you need to specific goals and specific training, what you want to do, I thought everybody should know this because it's just general healthy living. So I thought, well, why not put a magazine together, get it out there, and what's different about Famously Fit is the fact that we've got celebrities involved. So I write a few columns myself, um, I interview some celebrities, we've got like Corinne Nolan's doing like Pilates section here. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the reason I'm in Spain is RTN have got involved and they've given us a page in RTN which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but you can check out famouslyfit.com to find out loads of advice, health, fitness exercises. They, they're checking it online now, <laughs> that's how much they like it. It's great. So, I suppose during your time in Steps you had to keep up your fitness levels. Yeah. Personally, I've always been into fitness. I did martial arts from the age of eight, I played football, I've always gone to the gym. I actually grew up at the age of 15 with a weight bent in my bedroom with a muscle chart on the wall. How sad am I? But, um, it's always been there for me. So my life really has started off as sport and fitness. I've gone into the music entertainment and all that and it's sort of come back around on itself. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here again doing fitness is what I enjoy. Famouslyfit.com, I'm yeah. sure everyone will have a look at it. It's uh, in the round town news, as you say. Um, the future for you, you mentioned acting, are you doing a lot of acting? Uh, yeah, actually next month I'm taking part in a new musical. It's a play stroke musical and it's actually called Wolf Boy. Um, so that's something good for me to get involved with, something people didn't expect me to do. Um, I've done a couple of films and I always seem to get the gangster bad guy character. Which isn't bad really. It's That's great, yeah. but I, I just wonder why, you know. So, But it's nice as an actor to get out there and to push the boundaries and not be seen as, hi, I'm Lee, I'm yeah. Snips, yeah. you know, and just to do something different. It's really nice to do that. So yeah, there's a few strings to my bow really that I'm pushing forward. And you mentioned uh, you uh, manage a girl band as well. Yeah, I, I help sort of co-manage a girl band called Electrocute, um, electrocute.com. Uh, up and coming, three-piece girl band, fantastic, great talent. Um, but the way the industry is at the moment and the way the economy is, it's very difficult to get anything out of there. So starting off, pushing them from the bottom, working the way up, obviously I've had a bit of experience in that. I was going to say, so. it must be fantastic for a band to have someone like you involved because you know really yeah. what it's like from the inside. I think that's the nice thing about it is I can just give them a bit of advice and, and they actually listen because they're listening to somebody that's lived it. So it's all new, you know, we're touring up and down the country at the moment and they're putting an album together and then we're going to see what happens. Yeah. Any advice for, because there's so many youngsters who would love to follow in your footsteps. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, I would say just be genuinely honest with yourself. Don't listen to family, okay, because family love you. Listen to somebody who's outside of family that might have a feel for it. Go out there, do classes, do lessons, go and do little showcases. Go from the, the dog and duck and work your way upwards to get to the arenas and you'll get a real appreciation from fans then because you'll be doing it as an art and not just to be famous. And I think people nowadays, they want to be a celebrity. They don't want to be an artist and that's the difference. So you, you ask kids, what do you want to do? I want to be famous. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What's your talent? Do I need one? <laughs> you know, it's, the, the whole world has changed now. So I would say get a talent, work hard at it and just push, just push and push. It's not bad being a celebrity sometimes. Well, no, it can be great. You get your perks, you travel the world, and you can meet some great people, like I said. Um, but it also, you, you do lose a lot of your life. You know, you, there's not a lot of freedom. Um, you can't just get up and go to the shops looking like crap. Can I say that? Yeah. You can't. Um, people will want to know a lot about you, depending on how big you are. And I think you've got to be aware of that, because it's, no one can teach you that. That just comes, and you're, you're either going to like that or you're not. And I know a lot of people that thrive on it. <laughs> <laughs> I personally don't. So, <laughs> Lee, it's been a delight meeting That's you. That's cool. Thank no you very worries. much. And it's good fun. luck with Famously Fit. Thank you. And the girl band and the acting oh, and, yeah. and everything else. All the strings. Uh, while you're in Spain, are you going to enjoy the sunshine down the beach? Uh, I, I'd like to, but um, we're here for the two days. It's, it's more of a business trip than um, you know a holiday. So I might try and pop out to the beach tomorrow if I can. We've got some so. lovely beaches around here. The weather's not bad as well. All right. Food's good. Bit to drink. Who knows? Might stay a bit longer. Great. It's a pleasure. Thank Take you care. very much.